Well, hey, Mark, thanks for taking the time to talk today. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, I love your poster in the background. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, this movie was was like really great in, in that I didn't expect it to, to like lap as much, but then still be like, oh, like at the end getting teary. You know what I mean? Like it felt like it encompassed all of the things that I wanted. Um, but I'd love to know what it was for you that really drew you to want to be a part of this project. Well, first, first of all, thank you, and I'm so glad it resonated with you, and 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 you laughed and you cried, and uh, you know that means we've done our job. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it. I uh, haven't grown up in Texas. Uh, you know, I've, I've I've had the pleasure of knowing so many some of these you know larger than life characters like Merle Lusky, played by Thomas Hayden Church, and Faye Brown, you know, by Carrie Ann Moss, or or Bruce Stern's character Shearmeyer, and so. You know, it was a way to pay tribute to to some of my uh, experiences here in Texas and mm -hmm. and, and honor some of these uh, the incredible characters. And there's there's a rich, you know, history of, of great storytellers and great, uh, you know, filmmakers out of Texas. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a landscape replete with amazing, you know, uh, vistas and, and great characters. And so, yeah, from from a cine for a cinematic storyteller, it was just a rich environment. Uh, and plus, I've, you know, I've grown up here making movies with with these crews. And so I, you know, some of these people like our costume designer, I went to college with. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so uh, with Cohen Wooten, you know, who uh, co-wrote and produced the film with me, you know, I, I, he's a dear friend of mine, you know, for, for the past 25 years. And so it was, uh, you know, so many of the people that made this film are, are, are old friends, you know, that we've all worked our way up through, you know, the ranks in various ways. And so. Yeah, it was it was a it was a, a truly a dream project, and 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 oddly enough, it was one that I was attached to twenty years ago. Oh, uh, Julie Denny, who who uh, wrote the screenplay and and uh, produced the film, you know, she and I tried to get the movie made with Cohen twenty years ago. Was, couldn't quite pull the pieces together, but she came back to me in two thousand nineteen and said, "I've always dreamed of you making this film, and I love the fact that you're a storyboard artist, and and what a unique uh, sort of." Uh, you know, take that is for a director, and and mm -hmm. uh, we've got some money. Let's go make this movie, and 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 and, and we were off to the races. <laughs> I love that so much. That's like it's like fate, you know, that it all came together. Yeah. You I know, so much that. of the themes of the story are very much the <laughs> themes of, of an independent filmmaker. You know, your your back is against the wall. You've got all the forces against you, and you know, you just persevere and you never give up, and and you just keep going. And along the way, you you have you make wonderful friends, and and. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and survive the chaos of filmmaking together. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about being a storyboard artist and how that has helped you in, in the director's chair, because first of all, you've worked on some of my absolute favorite projects. So like Legion is one of my all time favorite. Oh, wow. Yes, I, me and Holly. I think it's phenomenal, but um, yes. But how did being a storyboard artist, like how does that help you when you're directing? What have you learned? Well, uh, you know, I, the, the biggest gift uh, is the master class that I that I attend on a daily basis with these incredible filmmakers. You know, each one of them I've learned amazing uh, things from, you know, from Terrence Malick, I would, you know, the poetry of cinema that it, you don't have to rely on dialogue, you know, music, sound, the emotion of performance uh, can carry so uh, carry a moment. Uh, you know, from Christopher McQuarrie and my dear friend on all the Mission Impossible films, Top Gun Maverick. You know, uh, he and Tom always talk about emotion and how you've got to find, you know, the emotion in each scene and really hone in on it and capitalize that. And it's not just with the performance. It's the your lens choices, your blocking. You know, what is it you're trying to convey to the audience? And and nothing can uh, everything. Everything must serve the story. Yeah. Um, and 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 that and, and also how you how you have to uh, you, you cannot ever be dogmatic you can't ever dig your heels in on something you have to be open-minded at all times and and let your creativity you know guide you um so each one of them has been an incredible gift uh, ken quapis my dear friend you know taught uh, really taught me about on set the joy of filmmaking mm -hmm. and let you know it, as stressful as it is and as difficult <laughs> as, as it is you know you're making a movie and you're the director you're 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 at the center of it you're fulfilling your dream Mm -hmm. and bring that joy and yeah and you know go off off stage go off off uh, off set to, to to vent to a producer uh you know uh, go quietly alone and you know and scream inside your head but to the to the to the cast and crew bring joy bring yeah. you know your 
because that's where you're going to be creative. And that's where you're going to, I've learned as a crew member, that's what inspires me. I want to work that much more harder for somebody that is, is, is respectful and is, is joyful. And so, yeah, each one of those. Uh, and then really what the storyboards do, I, I've, got some, I've got them here. I storyboard, you know, every frame of the, every shot in the movie. Wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, from whether it's, you know, Mission Impossible uh, to an independent film like ours, it, it provides the director the ability to, to, to show the whole cast and crew their vision. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really what it does is it provides uh, uh, for a very efficient uh, filmmaking. Yeah, you've already worked through so many of the problems. You've you've already stressed tested the script and how <laughs> yeah. it flows and its transitions and 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 also it allows you to to be very economic. Uh, and ultimately, when the storyboards when they're on set, you know you have them all printed up. And let's say it's it's you know three o'clock and you've got two hours of light left and you got six setups left and you know you can only achieve two. You and the AD and the DP go over and we start consolidating. Okay, we're going to cut these two. Instead of this dolly shot, we'll just do a master. You know, so you're able to make those decisions quickly and efficiently so that you don't lose time. Because again, on an independent film, there's no reshoots. There's no <laughs> yeah. anything. And so you better come to the table, uh, you know, highly prepared. And the storyboards really do that. So... Oh, I love it so much. That's so interesting. I always love the background of stuff and the how stuff is made. I always find that so interesting. Um, but I'm going to talk about this cast because this okay. cast oh, is absolutely. incredible. I mean, <laughs> Thomas had me cracking up. Like some of the things he would say, I was like, oh my God, like he was making me laugh so much. Um, but I'd love to know about just bringing them all on because they're phenomenal. And especially the main three together had such great chemistry. Absolutely. Thank you, first of all. Yes. It, you know, there's the old saying that I, uh, that, uh, I think Robert Altman came up with it. 90% of directing is, is casting. And it's so true. And for us, I'll never forget this moment where the four producers, we were in Abilene enjoying wine over at Julie Denny's house. And, and, you know, we, we were in the throes of casting. We were all dreaming and hoping that we might get to make this movie. And we get the call from our casting director that Thomas Hayden Church read the script and loved it mm -hmm. and wanted to play Merle Lusky. And and after he and I had a wonderful first conversation on the phone and he agreed to do the film, you know, having somebody of that caliber come on to your film, you know, it, it starts to pull other actors, you know, like suddenly people take notice. Oh, wow. Uh, so, you know, very quickly, uh, uh, Bruce Dern came to us um, and now we had two, you know, Academy Award nominated actors. And again, the, the gravitational pull just, you know, in, in increased. Uh, 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 Rudy uh, came to us you know he was not on our list though I will say my son every night because he's such a huge fan of Outer Banks you know kept saying dad dad you've got to watch this Rudy Pankow he's incredible he's he's, he's your <laughs> Irwin you know and it took me a while to get there but it, it, you know what a gift Rudy mm -hmm. was to this film and just an amazing young actor and was able to roll with all of these incredible talents he and Thomas formed a very quick bond uh, and then Carrie Ann was one of the last to come onto the production. And, and again, what an absolute gift. She rightfully, you know, recognized in the script that the character of Faye Brown was, a, was not as strong as she could be. And we, and we knew that when we were working on the screenplay, we'd focused so much on, on, on Thomas and, and Irwin's character. And so she really came to the, you know, challenged us. Mm -hmm. How can, how can we enhance this character? How can we enhance this role? Not out of, not out of greed, but of, I think this will help the story. And yeah. what a gift it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really sat down and, and, and uh, rewrote uh, much of her uh, character and enhanced it. Uh, and, and thank goodness, because it, it, it's, it, she's an indelible part of the story. And, and, and the relationship between her and, and uh, Tom Satan Church, you know, that grew uh, immensely. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So uh, uh, what a gift. What a gift yeah. to have those actors. And then the, the plethora of local Texas talent. Yeah. Uh, like Julio Cedillo, who's a, who's a dear friend of mine uh, and always kind of my good luck charm. I try to cast him in everything. And, and <laughs> you know, so, yeah, we, we were just so fortunate. But it all comes back to, I think we had a really attractive screenplay. We had a great yeah. screenplay, you know, Absolutely. That, that they all responded to. And that's without that, we wouldn't we would, wouldn't be talking here today. <laughs> I love it. Well, before before we wrap, I'm going to ask you, too, because there's not to give the spoils away. There's a quite a stunt towards the end. I will say. Yes. And all I could think about was the opening sequence of the of the movie. Like, is this how it went down? Like, we got one shot. We got to take that. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to not give spoilers, but I'm like, was this stunt? Like, what were the challenges? 
with the helicopter scene. Sure. And was it very much like, you know, what Irwin's going through at the beginning? Like, we got one shot, you got to make it work. You know, the helicopter scene, it, it's interesting. The big set pieces of uh, the helicopter, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, uh, you know, there's a stampede, uh, the opening. Yeah. Those were the smoothest to film. Because <laughs> really? We storyboarded it. We had had incredible, you know, so many meetings, safety, this, you know, you're dealing, you know, you've got a helicopter, you know, circling this, this oil rig, you know, those were the days that actually went the smoothest. Uh, well, except for the stampede, because cows won't ever do what you want. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't really direct We, we made it work, <laughs> you know, but it was the day and, and because, and as a director, you know, I'm, you're, you're laser focused. Everybody's laser focused to make this work because again, again, you're trying to pull off this huge sequence in a short amount of time. But again, we had the storyboards and we were able to just, you know, knock each shot out exactly mm-hmm. as it was planned. It was the days we were like, oh, finally, the next day is just two people talking in a room. I can relax a little bit. The crew relaxes a little bit. And of course, that's the day that things go terribly <laughs> wrong. Not because of the performance, but just because, you know, other thing, other, other, you know, the, the, the generator doesn't work for three hours and, you know, <laughs> all the calamities that a movie set's going to have. So incredibly enough, the big, and I think, you know, because I have worked on so many big movies, the, the Mission Impossible films, I'm used to working on those massive, you know, films. And so yeah. those, those big moments felt very natural to me and, and very easy to manage. Uh, uh, but I will say in the opening, which is in the trailer with yeah. the, the cataclysmic, you know, uh, uh, squib event, I will <laughs> say that as we were, you know, we were, it was the last part, it was an all nighter. We were setting up for that, for that first one to go off, you know, and again, it's an independent film. We didn't have very many wardrobe changes. It, we don't have the time to waste for any mistakes. And as we were setting up the very first squib, it fired off. Oh no! <laughs> and, and 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 bloodied our actress. <laughs> and you know, so it's like, well, it's gonna be forty-five minutes to clean her up and yeah. get her oh, get no. her changed into her now only only one remaining dress. So what do you do? You know, again, you you mm-hmm. don't scream at the crew. You you focus. Yeah. And, okay, we're already lit for this. Let's go shoot these other shots while we're waiting for them, and hope and pray that the next one. <laughs> goes off flawlessly, which it did. So yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. the, joys of, the joys of independent filmmaking. Yeah, <laughs> well, thank you, Mark, so much for your time. And I really enjoyed this film. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Tess. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks, Cheers. guys.